All right. I'm kind of nervous. It's been a little while. I was like, I was talking to Maggie beforehand. I was like, I'm kind of nervous. Like, it's been a little while. So. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And don't call it a comeback, because that's <laughs> not really applicable here. But I'm going to ask Father Turbo in Cyprian. <clears throat> I actually think Father might have a little bit of an advantage here. Okay. But I was going to actually ask you guys some hip slang terms that are active right now. That you that that are like in vogue right now, okay. And see, there's a couple of them. I'm gonna ask like five, okay. and like one or two of them are gonna be fake. So, okay, if you guys can guess if it's real, and then what it means, and then we'll have like a bonus question at the very end. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So, do you know what the word "coded" means? Coded. Coded. Like if someone uh... were to say, "Wow, that was very Cyprian coded." Co C O D E D. I mean, coded is like that's like a medical jargon for somebody's dead. Mm -hmm. But, but that I is not. What it, I don't know what it is in slang. I've not heard this one yet. Father, so are... I th I think it might be fake, actually. Yeah, I've I've never heard that one. But if I was to hear it, I would assume they're saying it's really in character. Father. Look at you. Okay. You're vibing with the teens. That's a real, okay. that's a real, that's a real term. That's real. Okay. <clears throat> this one's a little bit easier. Drip. Do you know drip? Yep. That's like a clo clothing, you yeah. know, your outfit, whatever. Yeah. 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 It's a cool yeah. outfit. Looks good. <clears throat> okay. Um, then, okay. Side quest. You guys know side quest? What that would be referring to? Is it like stressed out? Like stress? Somebody's like stressing you? Mm. No? No, it sounds like you're trying to get some sort of um, extracurricular relationship happening. Oh, is that it? No, it's when oh. you're talking to someone. From what I understand, the context I've heard it is from what uh, it's like um, you're talking to someone and they, they give you like something else to do. So like I like oh oh example, a side did you say side quest yeah what oh sorry side quest yeah like you in a said, video game I thought you heard side I thought you said side pressed oh no like pressed from the side yeah of course side no. quest okay got yeah, it yeah it's yeah yeah like, okay got it yeah so I think you get it um Whipple dip you guys know that one? <laughs> that can't be real. <laughs> It that's is real. Thick. It is real, but it's not hip now. No, that that's was from thick. a show like a couple years ago. It's tripping on a whipple dip. That's no, it was a no fake way. skateboarding <laughs> trick, I think. He's like, oh, dude, <laughs> tripping on a whipple dip. No way. Um, and then um, uh, I think that was all the obscene. What's that? It's obscene. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll do one more one, and then we can do the um bonus. Yeah, the bonus one. <laughs> um, well, a lot of these guys, I think you already really know. Um, one more. Sorry, I know this is real. Oh, okay. You guys know Riz? Yeah, yeah. Riz is like yeah. flirting. Nice. Riz is that face. It's like it's that, that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that. what it is. Yeah, it's that. It's that like yeah. your model face. It's like when someone's like. Oh, is that? It's the face. I thought that it was like a uh, like flirting with somebody. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it, but the oh, way it's the eyebrow, you got the yeah. okay, yeah. okay. So it's specific to the face. Okay, interesting, interesting. And you got yeah. the flip. Something new today. Look. At least the context from what I've heard. And by the way, I'm feeling so old right now. I'm just saying mm -hmm. like, the <laughs> fact that we're like discussing. Like, I think this is what it means. <laughs> like, I think this is what the teens are talking about. But this is like that uh, Zoomer Bible. Have you heard of that? <laughs> no. no. Oh man. Yeah, my my son brought it up to me. He's like, "Is this this can't be real?" Uh, <laughs> but 
Yeah, you might want to look it, it up. Is it a translation of the it's Bible? A trans, it's a translation. So oh, I can't no. tell. Oh, no. I can't tell if it's a parody or not. But if it is a parody, some whatever, you know, Sandals Community Church pastor did a sermon on it. And oh, it was no. like, like all pro. It. And I mean, I, it just, for, for an Orthodox Christian, and not even in the weird uh, triumphalistic, you know, like we're stuck up sense, but like mm. in a genuine sense, it's disturbing because the only section that I was able to to find, my son showed me all the times we looked up, it was always this one section uh, from Luke and the Magnificat, you know, mm. and I don't even want to like look it up because it's just like disturbing, you know, but it's basically like, yeah, you know, and Mary, she was simping for god and like all this stuff it was it's just oh terrible gosh yeah it's terrible it's terrible but you know the question is is, is it you know a parody i don't know if it is so some people are taking it serious if it is a parody but that that's what that reminds me of just it's it's odd <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just definitely odd there I is like, that there is that weird notion of cyprian before like, you get going like, this, this, this is the bonus question. Oh, this go, go. This is the one I was the most excited yeah. for. Okay, Do you ahead. guys know the significance, what the significance of being from Ohio is, or like being in Ohio? Drew Carey? Okay. All right. No, no. Wait, can you use it in a sentence? Like, how would it yeah, be? Yeah, like, it's like they'll show, like, the meme will be like a giant, like, like beast creature or something mm -hmm. from a mm -hmm. video game. And be like, don't ever buy a dog from Ohio. This is nothing. It's got to be a movie, right? It's got to be a movie reference, right? It's not. It's Cyprian, you're maybe you're not as plugged into the youth as you think you are. I'm just saying. I mean, I never claimed to. I never claimed to be plugged. In. I think <laughs> in your Twitter. I mean, I'm just saying from back in the day. I haven't I been know. on Twitter for a year, so. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I no, I, have, I can't back any of that up. But uh, being Ohio, like Ohio, is supposed to be like a. It's like, I don't know if it started like Stranger Things, even though it's not in Ohio, but it's like this like nothing Midwestern state. But it turns out it's like a hotbed of like paranormal activity and like oh. weird, like people mm. crawl on ceilings and stuff like that. So it's actually not even Zoomer humor because I've, I've talked to my 17 year old about this and she's like, that's actually Generation Alpha humor. And so in Generation Alpha, I guess, is my youngest kids's generation, like the, my oldest daughter's coming up on six. But like that's their humor is like is like oh bro must you know blood must be from ohio or something when it shows like this like like guy who's on crack or something like crawling up like a sewer grate or something oh so it's like it's their version of florida <laughs> kind of oh Sounds yeah like maybe it. that's what it is but maybe like yeah. florida man yeah it's yeah like it's a, their version of florida mm -hmm. yeah okay it, it's supposed to be so unsuspecting like mm -hmm. ohio like oh whoever thinks of something weird happening in ohio which you mm -hmm. know again mm -hmm could be like predictive programming or something like that because it's like you know who would expect something super big and weird to happen in like a nothing state but it's like it generally happens in the nothing state it's not like all the time but you know ohio's far from a nothing state though i don't think ohio's it is. A, ohio's a huge state no i mean it's got the it's got cleveland which is like got cleveland the, cincinnati and columbus it's where alcoholics anonymous was started was in ohio i mean i think Drew there's Carey. a lot of stuff I mean, yeah, as as father to, as father mentioned, you know, Drew Carey's from from Ohio. A lot of people are, isn't Ohio State also like the most populous college or so, uh, university or something like that? It's got like the most. I think it's got like thirty thousand students or or more. Did you that. know mm -hmm. that Notre Dame shut down? Notre what? Dame, the college shut down. It's like what it's do done. Mean? Yeah, they got their backing taken away. Something I kind of looked into it, and then something happened, but they got their what? backing taken away. In 2023 and then in 2024, they news. shut down. This it it could be. be. I don't know. I have no Hold idea. Hold on. I've got. I must. I must verify this. That seems. How would. How would that. How would I not know this? I don't know. I. You'd be hard pressed to find few people that know less than I do, and I happen to see it like on my like a news feed or something like that. That was like Notre Dame. Whoa. Show. We'll suspend operations at the end of the current semester. <gasps> yeah oh it's real it is mm. yeah Cyprian well that's the thing is i mean institutions are are failing and institutions are going to continue to fail 
uh, on increasingly larger and well known and well known kind of like scale, right? I mean, mm. that's that sign of kind of collapse, right? So mm. it's a so its funding is from the Catholic Church, though, no? Uh, well, from what I understood, but I don't know why they got their backing taken away in 2023. Like something, some organization that had been backing them financially or whatever said that we're not going to do that anymore. And yeah, and, when, and then less than a year later, they're shut down. That's interesting. And other Declining students got... enrollment, rising costs, large debts, and a shrinking pool. Well, this is the most canary in the coal mine. A shrinking pool of college age students. Hmm. Demographic. This is demographic mm -hmm. demise that's happening right here. I guess. What do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean by that. The the. So we're not like we don't have replacement value. Like so in order to have replacement value in a society, you have to have 2.1 children born per woman on average. Oh, Otherwise, okay. your population declines. OK. So and everybody's in decline, by the way. Everybody. Everybody. Well, almost. Well, certainly the whole West. Mm -hmm. And Korea's like the worst. Korea's like South Korea is basically in like 20 years, there's going to be no young yeah. people there, basically. Yeah, it's like the Global South are the only ones who are, right? Pumping it out. Yeah, Pumping Global it out. South. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's all of Europe. I saw a map. There, there was a map. I'll see if I can find it at some point in our conversation and pull it up. But it's, it's brutal. It's brutal, man. I mean, because between... I mean, it all really... The slide begins to start with the advent of contraception, right? But mm. you know, between between contraception and the kind of like evils that that shot out to the world, and <gasps> speaking of Ohio, that's what? where the freaking Rockefellers are. Are they from Ohio? Yeah, I mm. think so. Sorry, Father. Oh, I, didn't mean to cut I you think off. you could it, be oh, right. Contraception. I think you could be right. Actually, Rockefeller, yeah. Ohio, yeah, Rockefellers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think JD or uh, is buried in Ohio. People still leave dimes on his grave or whatever. Hmm. Okay, so. I I found it. I'm gonna pull this up for us. Um, let me see if I can send it to myself here and then pull it up. Uh, because it's a it's it's pretty grim. Um, it's a pretty grim scenario. Let me see. Cool. So in in ways like like the there's like the whole like um spiritual undercurrent of like of completely like God being like be fruitful, multiply, and just being like of contraception is like nah. And like the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, since we're talking about it, you know, I have been urged, you know, a couple different times to talk about the fact that like, you know, there's a correlation without a doubt between like um contraception and like it causing like many abortions not all of them mm -hmm. from what i understand but like uh there there's it's advertised as no 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 no. it prevents conception it's like no it doesn't prevent conception it actually what it does is it thickens the uterus wall mm -hmm. so the egg is not able to attach as well the conceived the conceived egg is not able to attach as well right and it, um and it dies because it just it like thickens the lining of the uterus wall. So from what I understand, that's what happens. So I mean, it's not it's not preventing any conception. There is a conception taking place, and then the conceived thing dies. The conceived can child you, dies. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yeah. It's the state brutal. of global fertility, fertility rate by country in 2021. So what's interesting is if you look at the global fertility rate in 1963, it was five point. This is births per woman. It was five point three births per woman. Globally, that was a global mm. average. Now it's two point three, but it's all being driven by Africa. Look, India. That what's interesting is this is like the yeah, stands, right? The middle section here. Is that Mongolia? Mongolia is over here. And they're they're good. They're at 2.0 2 to 2.9. But look at like Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, mm. the stands over here. And then right? the but all no. of Europe, Russia, the ones that are below 1.0. Palau is actually one of them. Hong Kong, that's South Korea. 
I don't know what this one is in the Caribbean. Is that not Guam? No, Guam Guam would be way out oh, here. And it know. wouldn't it wouldn't be on its own. It would be counted in the US. Um so I mean that's except not, for Venezuela, all of Latin America is basically they're okay. That's not Cuba, is it? No, Cuba's I think Cuba's okay, actually. Well, at least Dominican Republic is. They're good. They're in the blue. No, this red would be what would be over there? Puerto Rico's over there? No, Puerto Rico's down here. No, that's Jamaica. Puerto Rico's over here. Jamaica looks like it's okay, but I'm also red green colorblind, so that's not really oh that's for real. Very helpful. That's yeah. Interesting. But Africa is killing it. Just killing it. They're killing it. Look at that. Uh Afghanistan. Hmm. Pakistan. Well, look, you know what you see? Muslim, well, all well, the Muslim countries. countries. Yeah, but you all also the know Muslim those, countries. You also know those you see. You see areas where you need bodies to mine and yep. to field things. So yep. opiates out of yep. Afghanistan. Yep. And then precious minerals out of out of Africa. Africa. Yeah. There's now now this country. <laughs> so this right here above. I don't know what I don't know what this little guy is above Turkey. It's one of the stands over here. I don't know which one this is. It was uh, Kazakh? No, Kazakhstan's huge. I think that's this one. I don't know what that is. But anyway, all the Muslim countries, no country in Europe has replacement value. What's Ind What's India's little neighbor there? The real deep blue. That's yeah. Pakistan. That's Pakistan. And then Afghanistan is the deepest blue in mm -hmm. that region. Iraq is killing it. Come on, Balkans. Get it together. Iran Iran is not, though. That's what's interesting here. You know? But that, you can't... You can't, like... This is, but this is what we're going to see. You're going to see colleges shut down. It's like you don't see it, but the problem is, like, it's a problem that you wouldn't see for 18 years, right? And then it manifests as the canary in the coal mine of shutdown of universe of a university. Well, I think we've talked about this before. It feels as if things have been accelerated in, in all kinds of ways. Mm. But um, I, I know we were, we had talked about this before in respects of like here in the states and the quote unquote um, shortage of workers. Mm. And you know, we were talking, I was talking to a brother at the parish. This was last year, early, early last year, maybe even the year before that. But, you know, I was like, I don't think it's a shortage of workers in the sense of what people think. I think it's, you know, people from um, being incapacitated from vaccines and, and all kinds of other things on top of it. I mean, there's there's all kinds of reasons. And there was, I think we did a little short on it with um, the insurance companies and the insurance companies really trying to hedge their bets with some of these problems in regards of these huge spikes um, over the last, since 21, these huge spikes of morbidity and, and all these other issues. So, I mean, there's so many things that have happened recently to just accelerate something that was already started with, you know, um, contraception. But I mean, you just move that forward and you even get into the reasons why people use contraception anyways, you know, it's like, it's all rebellion, right? So there's two things. It's like, it's rebellion. There's the the, um, the command to be fruitful, multiply. Kids are a pain in the butt, you know? I'm not gonna be able to get all the things I want and do all the things I want. So everyone understands that, everybody understands that. So that's a driving force. Um, but also there's things that we don't really think about like fear and this increase of fear and inability to really, you know, take your rightful place you know, on a natural level, this this uh, being frozen with anxiety, you know, kind of like a social anxiety that's characterizing the last, you know, two generations. You know, that's been that's been kind of a buzz lately. Um, how they're the last these newer generations are really struggling to make these decisions. So that just makes starting a family in the file that just absolutely ridiculous. You know, how can I start a family? I'm still in my parents' basement. All those things. Um, but I would say going out even further than that, and this is where a lot of the 
the um, you know kind of ideology behind you know transgenderism and the LGBTQ thing is a real disdain for humanity. You know, a disdain for family structure, a disdain for like having children in that family yeah. unit. Um, there's a real disdain for that natural source of affection and community, um, which is characterized by self-sacrifice, right? Because it's not community that these people who are, you know, beguiled with the LGBTQ ideology, it's, it's not that they, because it's innate in us, but what it is, is they, they, it's the antichrist thing of, I want community, but community that's going to basically reinforce my self-love. Sure. I want community that's going to reinforce my hyper-individualism, right? Instead of the organic way, the, the God-ordained way of self-sacrifice and communion and all these things. So all that stuff has just brought us to this point really quick. Not even, you know, put it on top. The unreported, um, you know, casualties of the last two years, you know, medically speaking, quote unquote. Sure. So there's a lot. There's a I lot. Mean, I, it's interesting, this idea of, you know, I how can I... And it's funny because I, I had in some ways not not from like a, a a lack of financial capability per se but like this idea of oh like kids are so expensive and how will i mm -hmm. afford it and do all of this but really what i've found and i heard somebody recently say this and i'm not sure i'm not sure who it was it's on a podcast or something like that but they said uh I feel like it was somebody really famous who said this as well. And they, they asked him, what, what are your thoughts on kids? And he said, like, have them right away. I forget which mm -hmm. like kind of thought leader. He was like, no, no, no. Have kids right away as soon as you possibly can, because mm -hmm. that's what's especially as a man. He's like, get married, have kids. And they were like, oh, like even as a teenager, he was like, if you can get married as a teenager, get married as a teenager, have kids. Oh, as a teenager. was it um, maybe it was Matt Walsh? Like, cause I think he, mm, I think it wasn't got... cause I can't, cause I, he's insufferable to me, but <laughs> no, he is to me too. He, is to <laughs> but me. There's, he but did there's get in no... trouble for saying that though. Well, there's no like uh monopoly on truth though. And I, whoever this was, was saying, look, that's the thing that as a man is, I think it was a fighter actually he said, that's the thing that as a man is actually going to motivate you to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's in having the children that you will actually be motivated to be a man and to mm -hmm. be successful before that, what's mm -hmm. your motivation? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it will naturally, that, that will naturally kick in. If you're normal, <laughs> it will naturally kick in. And you know what? I experienced it. Me too. I think every man has experienced it. I think the only people who don't experience it are people whose conscience is so distorted, mm -hmm. you know, unnaturally. Um, which happens to people, unfortunately, but for the the vast majority of people, um, it is absolutely the thing. And I would even say this, uh, let me do this. I would even say this, part of the problem is we don't realize that that's kind of participating with the penance, right? Does this make sense what I'm saying? So um, expand on it, please, Father. Well, be fruitful, multiply, right? It was a command by God given to Adam. Um, and one way to really boil down Adam's transgression is his abdication of authority, his abdication of responsibility. So we should understand like authority and its proper way to understand it in regards of God's intent, the fall, all those things is responsibility. So what happens is authoritarianism, which our, which our world is moving towards at a breakneck speed, authoritarianism is, is basically the, the pulling away, the excising of responsibility. You see what I'm saying? And so, so you, you hand it to the state. You hand yeah. your, you hand you your hand responsibility it to, the state. to the state. You're, you're, you're abdicating, you're abdicating that authority that God, that God's given you. So, Adam, he essentially abdicates his authority and he starts shifting blame, right? When everything happened, if he had said, yes, it's my fault. I wasn't watching my wife as I should have. I wasn't watching Eve as I should have. I wasn't doing these things. Then there would have been a whole different trajectory of repentance. 
right? But because he abdicated it past the blame, right? That's that's what we inherit. So having children and, and obeying that first commandment is in many ways participating with that penance. Mm-hmm. So when you begin to take responsibility for life around you, you are entering into that participation of that commandment of, of being fearful and multiply in the whole dominion, right? Because that's the proper way of exercising dominion. Dominion is not abuse, right? So the flesh and the devil wants to take these things and, and invert them and, and hollow them out of the spiritual principles and just make it about the external, obey me, do what I want, you know? Um, whereas when it's infused with, with the obedience to God, it becomes responsibility, becomes proper dominion, which is tending, right? It's tending the garden, you know, that, that is what happens. And so when a man begins to have children and he's, he's anything but, you know, completely damaged, he will feel that rise within him. And then there's, there's a real grace there for him. And that grace is something that, that God gives to all men. It isn't just to the faithful. Right. That's something that this is one of those examples where we can look and say, kind of like the bigger, the bigger lens is this is God participating with mankind and trying to get mankind, you know, the Adam to 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 repent. Right. So we see that on a micro level within each family. And so when you have a cluster of families doing that, especially in this day and age and making up a community that becomes very powerful. Because everything in our society is really antithetical to that, right? It's not antithetical to authority. It's not antithetical to control. It's antithetical to this, you know, um, proper way of understanding it. Does that make sense? I mean, it, it does, I think yeah. that that's like that. I think Cyprian, that was one of the first. Um, I listened to you on a podcast, uh, I think like middle of 2020, and you were talking about. Um, I don't know if you'd use the same frame, uh, phrase that you did then, but you said that like if you've surrendered what your family should do to the guidelines of the state, you're being cuckolded. You're yep. essentially like you're mm-hmm. you're you've been replaced as the man, and like the need to maintain that authority. I mean, as a father and as a husband, it's integral to the fabric of my family that like mm-hmm. I stay in a place where it's like I'm not the boss. I'm not sitting there barking orders but that like you know be through the authority given to me i am like the i want to say the pillar because christ is the pillar we're all around but like i i'm something and it's got to be and i have to be where i'm at because if i'm not if i'm not calling shots and i mean i'm not gonna Can I stop you real quick though andrew yeah be- because i think there's something we could gloss over and, and i think it's important that we don't which is because Christ is the pillar or the head, that's why the man has to be too. I mean, that's that's Ephesians, right? As Christ is the head of the church, so the man needs to be the head of the household, mm. right? But that but that's not again that in no ways entails abuse no. or, or 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 tyranny, right? But it's important to recognize that yes, because Christ is the pillar, I now have to also be a pillar so that the the reign of Christ could be manifested. Yeah. Right? And that's 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 important because so much of our faith, whether it's icons, our theology, all those things, it it's our our faith, our religion, our experience, our theology is a theology of incarnation of, of, of embodiment. And so when we lose sight of it, this is why all the railing on, which we are wont to do here about ideology is so problematic, besides all the other errors of it. One of the huge problems of it is it undermines this core fundamental reality that you have to experience, which is which is incarnational, which is embodiment and manifesting the reign of Christ, you know, in a in a tangible way, not just theoretical. Right. And that's what well, and I'm gonna to return to something I was gonna say. And the only reason I'm returning it is because I was about to quote St. John Chrysostom. Otherwise, if it were just Andrew, we'd gloss over it. But it's since it's St. John. I was like, well, we got to talk about it. But he actually talks about the reason why a man has to be an authority is not because the woman is a lesser being, like a lesser mm-hmm. creation, is that she fell into deception first. 
Mm-hmm. She fell into the deception first. So therefore man is less, has a less of that relationship with the enemy. And if a man falls into a great deception, then the woman becomes the head of the household. Like according to St. John, he talks about like, if a woman is baptized till, you know, like uh, t- regular taking communion and the man is not, she's right with her bishop. She's kind of the head of the household, not in the same way, but she's kind of taking charge in a way that like Christ is blessing. And then um, that was something that Father Peter Hears actually just did a video on with somebody. They did like a little, he did like a 10 minute clip of somebody saying, basically like, I'm Catholic, but I want to, I'm thinking about becoming Orthodox, but I don't know which one. And basically he kind of looked at the camera. Wait, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know which one Orthodox or Catholic, or I don't know which Orthodox. What's he talking about? Oh, sorry. Let me make it more clear. He is current. The person who writes this letter is Catholic, writing to Father Peter Hears. I'm thinking of becoming Orthodox, but I still love Catholicism. What and they both seem so right to me. And basically, he kind of looks at the camera, and in a way that still shows me, I just don't know anything. I thought he was about to kind of go off a little bit, but he didn't. He went into this whole thing about like you have to go to services, you have to experience the incarnational reality of the church. He's like the because I didn't know this about Father Peter. He was Catholic for like a year and a half before he mm-hmm. went to his Orthodox service, and he went to his first. He's like, well, this is it. I'm, I know what this is. This is a whole another world. This is completely different, and this is it. And that's I think that's the experience he was trying to jumpstart in that person is like no, like yeah go to services. That's the only way you can experience this. It's like, be a father. It's the only way you can experience this. It's the only way that you can really look at this and see like, oh, well, I understand now what it means to be authority. I I, I have to understand what it means to be like a, a, and I don't know if I'm using this term correctly, but a small C Christ of like, I have to be the God in the family, like the intercessor, like the person to be able to like pray for my family and be, be mean when I need to be and be gentle when I need to be and be loving when I need to be. So, which is a cross. Like, and I think Absolutely. that that's, that's the difference between the authoritarian and the, the real actual leader is that the real leader and it's, Oh man, in the, in the election season that we're in, but I even see it in the microcosm here, right. Is it's just really become clear to me. And I think and you can see it in who's a good father and who's not a good father. Like when you look at a father, when we say, oh, we look at somebody and they're like, oh, you're a good father, you know, and and, you know, glory to God, I've been told that a few times and really only since I've become orthodox. Sure. <laughs> right. Um, sure. But it's like in those moments, what and I've just noted them because I've been like, oh, well, what's being said here? In those moments when it's been like, you know, you're a good father. It's because I've it's been a moment where I've taken on a cross. Like where I've actively just Mm -hmm. been like, okay, nobody else is going to do this. I'm taking on this cross right now. Like, do I want to be doing this? Is this like making me happy? Am I enjoying this in any way? No, I am not. But at the same time, there is a there is a certain feeling and a certain reward that that is there that is like a spiritual very holistic reward to and it's 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 hard to explain that it's like it's a good pain in a way it's i mean that takes us back to our very first episode right Mm, yes that's our very first episode yes and doing the hard thing is the hallmark of being what it means to be a father you know you do the hard thing for the love of your family, you know, and that's what it means to be Christ. Christ does the hardest thing possible, mm. purely out of love. There, there, there was no need at all, no necessity within the Trinity for any of it. It's purely love. So, mm. Mm. And and of course the of course, economy, right? Economy being the household, and we're talking about head of household, mm-hmm. and. I feel it's it is interesting to me, but it's there we, too for the women, the mother of God. I mean, she sure. says the she says the hardest thing ever, right? So she redeems she redeems Eve, right? She's the second Eve, so she she redeems that she carries that. I mean, the mother of God being 
I'll forgive me to cut you off. It's just it's so perfect and beautiful, right? Forgive me. No, I mean, it's she... it it's I'm I'm just I'm what I'm gra I'm grappling with this. You know, because I'm seeing the parallels of le like leadership and fatherhood mm -hmm. and how little within our age and in the world, the two, it's almost like the enemy is trying to purposely separate the two. Whereas in the ancient world, they were so tightly tied together that you would have a king's list that would be like, he's the son of him and he's the father of him and he's the father of him is very, very important. And also... Yeah, it's 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 incredible. It's drawing me. I was down on on our middle island, which only has like eighteen hundred people, called Tinian, and I had a meeting with their leadership the last week. I flew down there, and it was interesting because I had an experience that felt like very much a throwback. Right, they're very traditional people down there. They speak the, the their language, the Chamorro language, more than like English, and um, they're all very united. And I was in the mayor's office with the mayor and their senators and the municipal council and some. And it was interesting how it started because all around the room was all of the previous previous administrators and mayors of Tinian, which is kind of like a governor has the power of a governor, the way our constitution is set up. It's like a provincial all the way to him. And before the mayor started, the mayor, before the mayor started, he's at the head of the table. He starts at the very first one. And says, oh, that's, I forget his name, Hofschneider. That's the grandfather of Senator Hofschneider who was sitting next to me. And then he goes to the next and he says, he's the grandfather of him, the father of him. The, the, he went through basically their list mm -hmm. for me as, as the intro. That was the first thing wow. he did as the introduction of sitting down there and he's related to him and he related and he's his father's brother, like of the people sitting at the table and then came to himself. And I said, so, so Mr. Mayor, who, who are you related to on, on here? He said, well, me, I'm not related to anybody by blood, but my wife is related to every single one of them. So my mm -hmm. children are, mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, this is what this is actually supposed to look like. Like, this is what it actually looks like. And I had never experienced it. And and it showed in what ended up happening in that whole interaction and how positive it was and how fruitful it was, as opposed to everything I had ever experienced. And I was like, where did we go wrong? Well, what's this is what it always was. What's interesting is we are obviously the error where the way in which the glitch enters into the world, because I just want to kind of bring this in as a, as an evidence for that. The, the react, the, <laughs> generally speaking, I would like to think, I feel comfortable saying this, the general response of Orthodox in America, watching the Tucker Putin interview, very different than everybody else. Right. Because Everyone's just like, oh, you know, even Tucker was like, well, Putin's, you know, kind of, you know, grandstanding, trying to filibuster. But I was like, no, no, no. I see where right? you're going now. Yeah, because no, 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 I didn't no, no. I hadn't even registered. It's the same thing that he was doing yeah. right there. He did the exact same thing. Right. Because he and, and that's the thing. But from the second I watched it, I was like, oh, yeah. And it, and it shows truly the Eastern Western mindset. But shout out to, you know, our brother, John. Right really old world versus new world. And I think, you know, just really, that's why the old world versus new world categories, right, are so important right now. Because East West, which is something we've talked a lot about last year, it's deceptive and it doesn't really give you the kind of longitude and latitude to navigate what the problem is. So, but you get a better focus when you say old world versus new world, right? So Putin laying out that history of Russia and Ukraine and really with like without saying anything like why this is a fratricidal family affair and you are interfering with that, right? That that is an old world understanding, right? And the new world, which for as great as, as my man Tuck is and all those things, and as much as he's very much got his eye on the right right on a lot of things. He's really new world. Yes. He, you know, 
and and his Episcopalian quote unquote background. And it, it's funny because we'll talk a lot about his roots with I don't know if it's Jamestown, but definitely like some of his family, like the first people here, family, you know, um, immigrating, being founders in Canada, all that stuff. He's still a very new world, right? And and that was betrayed with that Putin interview, like right there, mm. right? So that that's a huge thing. And it's, and it's interesting because I would say this is my own kind of, you know, two cents about it, but that's another area in which being you know brought into the church orthodoxy you begin to see like how you actually are being grafted into the body of christ this is why it's important to understand that the body of christ isn't this invisible mystical thing that's been put out you know as a doctrine by dispensationalists you know for the last hundred whatever years the reason why this is pertinent is because things like tradition being rooted and grafted to, to a people bloodlines all those things that that's all you know forgive me my own little um digression but i think even some of the um some of the distraction there's some legitimacy to it it can go off it can go offline obviously but there's a lot of distraction when people get scared talking about you know ethnicity and nation and all that i think a lot of that is also a distraction to get people away from the old world understanding of being responsible right having accountability to a nation to a people group and you begin talking like that people throw up their hands like oh racist all this stuff but that's really part of the enemy's trick too because all those things are little you know it's like the tent in which humanity finds itself healthy the tent pegs you can go around and see where all where the enemy is trying to lift up all the tent pegs. If this analogy is making sense, so that the tent can fly away, right? Um, gender, <laughs> you know what I mean? Tied ties to family, responsibility, fatherhood. All these are tent pegs by which the the tent of humanity is is housed in. And this reality of not understanding that this is there's something fundamental to just being human. When we look at these things and the 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 turn of phrase to say, well, it's barbaric, or you know, all these other excuses that are being made, it's it's backwards. This is fundamentally also why, you know, our our Roman Catholic, our Latin brothers and sisters, maybe not the ones who would have dialogue with us, but the ones who would say, uh, you know, the Orthodox, they still will look at the Orthodox as, you know backwards tribes, you know, these backwards tribes that have no, no sophistication of, of authority administration. But what they don't understand is that administrative model that Rome took, which is obviously, I've said before, if you want to understand it, you read Dostoevsky's, um, you know, you read the Brothers K and then read within the Brothers K, the, the Grand Inquisitor, but Rome taking that that final temptation that Christ, you know, succeeded, you know, and that's, that's the, the, the authority over the world, right? Because that centralized quote unquote authority of the Pope, that tyrannical structure, right? is not the structure of a father, even though Pope Papa is supposed to mean father. It's anything but that. It's, an inversion. It's, it's an inversion. It's an inversion. So of course they pick Papa as the, as the term, yeah. right? Yeah, but is did that line did you did that yeah. line make sense? Did you see where I was? Yes. I, if I got it, yes. probably most people did. Like I think yeah. that that's a pretty clear line from point A to point B, of like the, you know, make it start at the macro, then make it to micro. You know, like you start at the top and then make it to the bottom. So, no. I but it also it it is also interesting, right? That you would have the, and it seems so anti. It seems so anti-orthodox in the incarnational way like it's 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 heterodox in that you would have the highest authority be il papa be the be the mm. father but yet you wouldn't let any of the clergy beneath be fathers incarnationally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. that makes no mm -hmm. sense 
I don't mm-hmm. know what you're talking about. So what do you mean they won't, he won't let? Well, their clergy are celibate. The clergy are celibate. Oh, I got you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whoa. So it's, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You see oh. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is like from everything I've experienced in orthodoxy, it's at, it, it, it it's fractal. So it goes down every level. So if it's like, yes, the father, then that means, yes, the father all the way down, mm-hmm. real father, incarnational father all mm-hmm. the way down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So to say I'm the only father that gets to be a father and all of you beneath me don't get to be fathers. Mm-hmm. And but I'm not even an incarnational father. Mm-hmm. That we know. That's of. like what in the world? What in the world is that? <laughs> that like, what in the of. world is that? <laughs> well, right, that we know of. That we know yeah. of. <laughs> On paper. That, Vatican's <clears throat> really big. Lots of place for dungeons. So mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. I but yeah, so, I I don't know. I mean, I know that uh that was one of the things that continues like it's always the issues when I talk with Catholics. That's always one of the things that always tends to get brought up is the Pope. They're always like, Well, I've I've run into I would say if I've run into ten Catholics, it's more than that, but if I've run into ten, probably two of them are cool with the Pope. Like two of them are okay with the idea of the Pope. The other eight are like, yeah, I just kind of take it with the rest of the stuff. Like it's not great, but the rest of the good stuff is here. So we just kind of take it with that. And then generally the celibacy of the priesthood, like that, that how, and like, I don't, I don't really know why that's, I mean, I know now because Cyprian just kind of pointed out one of maybe the nefarious reasons, but the apostles were fathers right like they had yeah. children mm-hmm. they had wives yes. like yeah. like okay and i mean well well the thing is so you have to you have to remember that properly speaking you know our bishops now are pulled from the rank of monastics they're supposed to be you know you have a lot of bishops who aren't, aren't who aren't actual monastics um but they were celebrate clergy and archimandrites who uh, eventually get elevated to episcopacy but Generally speaking, you know, our our bishops um, for a while, for a long time, actually have been, you know, from the ranks of the monastics. Um, But that is a different understanding and model than what's being modeled um, in Rome. Now, um, you know, simony in regards of with money and everything, that's if I'm, I'm probably mistaken. So somebody clickety clack for me. But that's one of the reasons why they point to why they began to um, implement celibate clergy was to avoid that. Um, but the ramifications of it and whether that's the whole case, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means on it, but I just know that that's a thing, but it's a, it's different than how we would look at, you know, again, our bishops, because our bishops are supposed to be, our bishops are celibate. Um, but that gets into when you look at each function of the clergy, so you have the priesthood in general. I don't know if anyone wants like a catechism right now, but you know you have. Uh, of course, the that's deacon. why we're here. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> you have, you have, you have the deacon, you have the priest, and you have the bishop. All three of them are in the rank of priesthood, right? So, um, the deacon, being the lower order, is can be understood as an angel, but can also be understood. Uh, and and the ability to purify, okay? Um, the priest is in the stead of Christ, right? And, and, you know, revealing Christ, and the priest is also given the power to, to, to illumine, right? So with each, with each move, you know, the, the priest retains the ability, right? Um, and that character trait, that that chari- that charisma, if you will, of purification, but now illumination is added to that in regards to the grace of the priesthood. But then the bishop is is to be brought. The bishop is known to be brought into the fullness, the deification, right? And so you can understand the bishop in this sense, really representing, you know, yes, Christ, yes, the herald and angel, all those because that's all in there, but also the Father. In the sense of, you know, the kind of the head of the church, everything, you know, kind of um, originating, you know, proceeding from his preaching of the gospel. Right. So 
this is important because when you begin to understand that the bishop is also this kind of fulfillment of the angelic life, but also too, the bishop is this example of the fulfillment of like Christ because Christ is the monk. Like Christ is the truest, perfect monk also, right? So, you know, none of those are, it's all kind of swirling in there. You know, it's like you, you mix, <laughs> you mix seven up in cranberry juice. It's like, wh where does one end? Where's the other one begin? You know, but does this make sense what I'm saying? So yes. this, yes. this develop, this development of um, the bishop being from, from the rank of the angels is a move of the Holy spirit. And this is an example of, of tradition. And I would say, this is another reason why um, we don't just see something that the, that the Latins do and go, oh, the Latins did it, it's wrong. But we can observe that they'll, they will do something, but then take it autonomously and just, just ruin it. Forgive me, <laughs> you know, but, but that, that movement of uh, celibate priest or celibate bishop, it makes sense. In our, I mean, we hold that perfect tension there, right? Because that tension is the bishop is married to the church, and that devotion is is what has been is what has afforded um, the kind of peace of mind for for the body of Christ. Right, this devotion. Now, the argument would be, yes, but the Roman Catholic priest is just kind of modeling that on a lower level for the people. And that's why they're they're celibate. And I don't know if we want to have a whole argument about that, but I would just really counter to that and say, okay, we could talk theory, but de facto, how has that played out for them? Not too good, right? Not too good. Um, and so we see, again, the evidence of the Holy Spirit guiding us versus the predilections and dispositions, intellectually speaking, which of, of man, which is what guides the Roman Catholic Church, we would say. And we would say that's evidenced in the fact of these gross errors right mm. Mm. because when you say gross errors we're not talking about ones or twos here or there because men men are falling right and so you're going to unfortunately find you know orthodox priests that fall right it's it's not just like oh whatever but the thing is is when you look at the total sum right the total sum is this movement has caused a real problem for the roman catholic church because it's everywhere Mm. Right. It isn't it isn't just a kind of thing in the States. I mean, the abuses and I want to get off of it after this, but the abuses, whether you're talking in Ireland, whether you're talking in Brazil, whether you're talking, you know, in the Midwest, the, the abuses are, are anywhere that Rome has been. Those abuses are there mm -hmm. in mass, not just one and, or and two. for centuries. For centuries. So I just think that that. You know the kind of proof is in the pudding in that sense, and so that gets us that gets us back to this incarnational. I think it's just more evidence of the incarnational. Um, it's like it's baked into our our tradition because we're. I almost want to go on this tangent, but don't let me. Excuse me, but this thing about you know when we say we're the true church, that's probably one of the most misunderstood things. It's like icons. Um, the Theotokos, you know, the true church, these are things that people just lose their minds over. Well, what do you mean, like, you're the true church, you know? Um, does that mean that, you know, I'm, because I'm not Orthodox, I'm going to hell, this or that? And that's not implied in that at all. But what we are saying is this latter conversation we just had, I would put as, you know, exhibit one of 50,000 why we are the true church because yeah. of the living experience of it 100%. right well and rome doesn't deny that forgive me father rome doesn't deny it because no. in vatican ii it says that that we're the true church yeah it well, says we a, weren't true, the... a true church with valid uh, it says yeah. a true church right a yeah. true church with valid sacraments but it's like well that's that's not a denial it's pretty right. interesting that it's like Right. Rome says, no, no, they're 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 a true church. We're a true church church too, though. But then on the yeah. Orthodox side, it's like, actually, no, you're so, not. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because I think that's the joke. The joke is if you ask the Catholic, they're like, oh, we're pretty much the same thing as Orthodox. If you ask the Orthodox, <laughs> they're like, oh, absolutely not. We're not like them at all. Like there's a which, huge... which honestly, 
that kind of tells you everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, just a, just as a practical, common sense type of situation, were you to encounter that in any other situation, you'd be like, oh, I see what's happening here. But I see what's yeah. going on here. But that's kind of the thing about it. Because, okay, what what is a what is the what is the Catholic Church doing by acknowledging us as like as a valid church? Like, what's what's why would they do that? Like, is that because is they, because well, they, they have, have to. to? They have to because they have to. Okay, mm-hmm. why? I don't understand why. Because to understand what it means to be a Christian. Right. Um, And because historically um, and not just historically in the kind of like, well, it's written in the book, but that but the experience of the deposit of faith that was given. Through the apostles by the Holy Spirit, that church is is like the Orthodox Church and Rome can't Rome can't deny that. I mean, it's just theologically like theologically speaking. Right. Um, even for us, like we can say, like, we would go like, well, you guys are, you know, at best you're schismatics at best, if not just flat out heretics, you know, but at best. Um, but the thing is, is we've maintained that original deposit of, of faith, which includes doctrines, which includes dogmas. Right. And that's not up for, that's not up for debate. That that's just like an objective fact. Right. Okay. So you say, there's that there's that meme I think of like the Protestant bearing the New King James Bible before the Catholic. Oh, Pastor Jim. The Pastor, yeah, <laughs> Pastor. Thank you. Pastor. Okay. All right. So, so would they say what a what a let's say you talk to priest Jim Bob or what or whatever from like the Catholic Church and mm. would he say that Constantine was a Catholic then? Would he say that Byzantium was a Catholic Empire? Well, Father, doesn't the creed say that though? Yeah, one holy Catholic. Yeah, because it's like what are we talking about? We say Catholic, right? So, you know, Lord case, capital, you know, case. So here's the thing: I want to move the direction a little bit because this is kind of low level. You can just go pick up a book and read this, right? I think the thing that's really important here is understanding why, not why, as in like give me the technicalities, but the Orthodox guess, Church, but well, hold on, the Orthodox Church is where someone can encounter the fullness of Christ, which then brings them to transformation theosis. That's the key thing to understand. Because that's where a lot of people lose sight, is that they, including some people, right? That's why we do this project, right? A lot of people become Orthodox. A lot of people become Orthodox for the same reasons people become Catholic sometimes. And what we've been trying to say is you're missing out. And you're not getting it if that's why you became Orthodox, which is to kind of just dot your I across your T. That's not that's not the thing. You you become Orthodox so that you can encounter Christ. What does it mean to encounter Christ? It means to be purified of your passions, to be brought to illumination, which is the experience of the Holy Spirit, right? Which leads you to the devotion and love of Christ, which ultimately ushers you into the bosom of the Father, and that fulfillment plays out in theosis, which is experienced and born witness to and by our saints. That's what it means to be orthodox. But that process is a process that is living and experienced by anyone who has been baptized and chrismated and participates faithfully in the sacraments. That process of encountering Christ is what it means to be in the true church. And that's why you have churches that will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. You will have churches that will allow someone to have an experience of religion, which is good, to have an experience of an awareness of Christ, which is good, to have an experience of all these things. But the problem is they're disjointed and they're often grasped with a very idolatrous and rationalistic approach. So in other words, it's self-deification through morality. That's that doesn't get you that doesn't get you united to Christ, 
right? Yeah. So what I mean by that is if I can just dot my I's and cross my T's morally, I'm good. That's not the case at all, right? So the transformation of being united to God, theosis, that is fundamentally like what we're talking about. And that is why when you diverge from the traditions that have been given and handed down through the fathers by the, by the Holy Spirit through the fathers, when you diverge from the praxis, right, from the praxis of the church, you come up short, right? That's really where the conversation needs to be at because I think, I think the other way in regards of, you know, kind of arguing some of the technicalities, I think that's where some people, st they get stuck in the web and they begin to say, well, tomato, tomato, um, at least when I go to Rome, I know what they believe. I can open the catechism. Um, I can get Lacey Doyles and like whatever they're into and just kind of like do that thing. Um, but that isn't what, the opposite of that isn't what we're promoting, right? That, that's, a, that's what I mean by that is like, yeah, there's, I think a better aesthetic. I think there's more freedom. I think all those things are there, but those things are the fruit of mm. this, this body, which has maintained the means of being united with Christ. That's, that's the key thing. It isn't like we take those things, right? So like the guy who comes and he's like, I like the Orthodox church because they preserve ethnicity and nationality because there's the Russian church and the Bulgarian church. Like you don't get it. Get out of here. Go to Rome. You know what I mean? Well, he's and I know that person like that. Is, for, forgive me, father. That person yeah. is also clearly not experiencing Christ. No, because no. the second that you no. experience Christ, you you abandon yeah. that immediately. Like yeah. you 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 have no choice but to abandon that. You yeah. can't help but abandon that. Yeah, because you're yeah. like, oh, this is it. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. this is so much more. Yeah. I can't intellectualize this. <laughs> yeah, you can't. And and I would say this. This is also really key because that kiliastic tendency, that kiliastic delusion, that kiliastic seduction, which is so strong. Right. That's what you see in spades for these people. They want they want a clean, safe utopia to just kind of like have their have all their worldly pleasures, but still maintain but still maintain religion and a sense of kind of morality. Right. That's that's the problem, because it's really an abdicating again of that responsibility. And it's an abdicating of the cross. Right. Because it's one thing to have your family together. It's another thing to suffer for them. You see, there's there's a distinction there, right? Because you can you can keep. I mean, this is this is why the boomers are where they are, right? Because that previous generation they knew how to keep a they knew how to keep a, a tight and clean house, but they were notoriously detached and notoriously, you know, kind of iron fisted about things. So that's why the boomers had their, you know. Besides CIA manipulations and all that stuff, but that's, that's why the boomers yeah. had had their had their response. So that's why it isn't just about having everything high and tight because that's what the Nazis did. I mean, one of the things about um, I didn't watch the show much, but there is a snapshot I've always kept of this show for whatever reason. I guess it's maybe so I could say this tonight. But the man in the high tower is that. Oh yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't watch much of that show, but is, there it, is... is it a Philip K. Dick? Was that a it Philip is. K. Dick? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's yeah, so it's just... so very Philip K. Dick. Yeah. It's his opus. Everyone says it's Okay, his okay, got it. Got it. Okay. But there's a one there's one section in the show where there's the one Nazi officer that they kind of follow along. And you know, he leaves and he goes to his family and they he's so he's in his SS uniform, which is looking really tight, you know. And he's got his family and all that stuff. And then he just goes and, you know, he'll go, he'll go and torture people, whatever. That, you can't do that in orthodoxy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't, you can't do that in orthodoxy. You can be in the orthodox, you, you know, you can be in the institution, but the organism of the church, you can't do that. Right? Oh, Father, this is bringing, this, and, and this is bringing up to me when you said that, because of course, Hey, if you're an SS officer, you got you get a Hugo Boss uniform, don't you? Like yeah. it's Hugo Boss, you know what I mean? And it's it's bringing up for me, and I know we probably shouldn't even talk about it, but it's bringing up for me the, the Peterson jacket. No, the Peterson jacket. 
Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to talk about Con- yay. No, the controversy <laughs> of the Peterson jacket. Him too. <laughs> right? <laughs> the Balenciaga. But the, the controversy of the Peterson jacket, and it goes yeah. back to... Ooh. Well, for you those, know, boy, those who the, aren't familiar, Jordan yeah. Peterson wore a Schema Monk like adjacent jacket with a bunch yeah. of like the schema monk apparel on the back of it. It's just total. Weird. Well, the, the aesthetic, right. The aesthetic, and, and I think aesthetic. that that's, that really goes to when you said that father about wanting, well, it's the Christianism thing to where you look mm. at Christianity and you're like, Oh yeah, it's especially orthodoxy. And you're like, you look at it at this intellectual level and there's that temptation. If you're of that sort of bent and orientation to be like, Oh yeah, this is how I can organize and get mm-hmm. everything in order with my family and my community mm-hmm. and all of that until you encounter Christ. And he goes, drop it and come to the cross. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to stay here. You mm-hmm. stay. I can't. I'll stay far enough away that I can't. I could barely hear you and be like, wait, what did you mm-hmm. say? What did yeah. you say? But I'll keep the all of the aesthetic. And that's the jacket. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, uh. <laughs> I, I I was like, ah, oh, don't bring it up. And then you said it, and I was like, oh, okay, now I got to bring it up. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, uh, how charitable or how scorched earth should you go on this, you know? It's like, <laughs> people tend to like scorched earth a little bit, but I'm not saying it's beneficial. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I think at the very least, like I could, you know, I saw there was like the arguments about. Um, Father, may, well, I start, may I start yeah. with one question? Isn't please, that kind please. of dangerous for him to do? Isn't that kind of yeah. that was uh, my concern? That my yeah. concern was for him because <laughs> and his soul. The stuff that's written on that, I don't know. Yeah, well, okay. yeah. So there's a there's a whole there's a whole thing, that, and someone can make the argument, I, I, man. See the problem. The problem with this is, is even the fact that like someone's like, well, that's not technically a schema. It's technically a golf across. Like uh, that. Like even having that argument is part of the problem. Yeah. You see, because it introduces confusion, right? And it introduces confusion that fuels a kind of a type of contention, and that contention ultimately fuels a type of hubris and it's just super problematic and it's poison in the water, right? It's, it's a drop of poison in the water in the mind of the faithful, but God allows it because it's the kind of wheat in the chaff, because here's the thing. It's important. Like on the one hand, on a human level, it's like, we all make mistakes, whatever. And it's part of the reason why we could make the argument for an increasing movement of returning to tradition and clamping down on the mysteries of the church, right? It's like you almost can't do it because the Pandora's box has been opened, right? But what happens is you get these people who begin delving in things, into things. It's like, you know, if you just pull up the internet and find out whatever. I mean, I remember years back, just to kind of pull a little bit heat off of JP. I remember years back, what was that guy's name who fell in the glitter? Uh, what was his name? He was an American Idol like winner and star who <laughs> he had a little bit of a run. One of you guys type in fall in the glitter, the song, right? Okay, uh, I'll do it. And this guy, right, just to show you guys, this is the, the new, people don't even know about what I'm about to show you, but this guy, Fall in the Glitter, whatever his name is, um, he was wearing, like, a faux schema outfit, like, during his, you know, one tour, or right? Um, and so, this is really interesting, because, like, mm-hmm. Did you see it? Did you find it? Mm-hmm. On the no, glitter there's, <laughs> yeah. nothing. there's nothing. He's been scrubbed. Yeah, he had this hit song, Fall in the Glitter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was his name? Are you talking about Clay Aiken? That's the only American Idol guy I know. Then was there, that his name? There's the guy was that, that was on the for a little bit, too. 
Um, I think that might have been him. Adam, uh, again, I think that might have been right him. now. But hold on, let me see. Clay Aiken. Let me see if I can even <laughs> get glitter. You know what's funny? When I'm to pulling up glitter with this, it's just uh, Jelly Roll right now, who's also an interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Really where'd that guy come from? That's... I don't know. It's it's it's. I don't. I I can't. Uh, Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. That's... Adam Lambert. Yeah. Adam Lambert. He sung for glitter Clan disco Lambert. balls. Yeah, but like he had the. Like, I think it was like yeah. I think he had the song fall in the Blender Adam Adam Lambert's glitter. So it's definitely yeah. associated with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So glitter um, man. Yeah, Adam Lambert. Yeah. Okay. So he wore a so at one point in time he wore like, this weird schema jumper like weird thing, right? And this isn't I mean this isn't new to me. That might as well be Batuiska, you know that terrible band, yeah. right? Oh. Like, oh, you named like, Father. We've gone like seventy five episodes without naming him, and you just named him. Oh, that's forgive me. Uh, no worries. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm delirious from the surgery, but we'll chalk it up to that. that. Re- yeah. That reality of the symbols of the church, which is interestingly enough, right? That whole thing happened at um, the other JP, the two JP, <laughs> JP's symbolic world conference. You know, um, the symbols of the church need to be guarded because what happens is, is when people get a hold of them and they misappropriate them, and then the proliferation of those images and those symbols get thrown out. What happens is it waters down the impact of it and it really causes serious problems. You know, I mean, I understand on the human level, we can just say, well, you know, he's just, you know, he has a tailor. He doesn't even know what they're going to give him, whatever. And he just kind of like wears whatever. But I would even argue. Oh, come on. He chose well, what he was going to wear. To It's the symbolic world conference. And Jordan Peterson is teaches symbolism. You think he sure. did he wasn't absolutely sure. aware of what he was. I can't, I can't sure. go with that one. Father. Sure. That's obvious. But I would even say if, if you give the benefit of the doubt to that argument, it makes it even more egregious. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because yeah. that flies in the face of make your bed and all that stuff too. Where's the responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the yeah, responsibility in regard to things? And so I think the thing is, is that, Again, it just it betrays the fact that people don't see orthodoxy for what it is. They see orthodoxy as an ideology. They don't yeah. recognize orthodoxy is the body of Christ, right? The mystical body of Christ and the otherworldly kingdom. They don't they don't understand that. They don't see it, and so it causes real problems. It causes confusion and all those things. You know? Did you find it? Did you just find the Adam, Adam Lambert? In I the, sent it I, to the group, our group chat or whatever. Oh, you did? Yeah, I don't know. I, we you can't do, you did find it though? There's, there's yeah, an he's wearing, it's like, a, it's like a hoodie. It looks like a hoodie or something did, like did you that. Find it? And there's like a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pull, yeah. So I'm just saying, I, this that, yeah, that's from yeah, whatever... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see. That's I from whatever I'm year that was. I mean, this isn't anything new. And like, I know... I just got to go there, right? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, and like that's those things aren't by accident. Those things aren't by accident. Well, this no. this to me, the fact that Adam Lambert did it, like, you pull it, it up, almost, it almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it here, but it almost to me makes it almost. <sighs> It almost makes Jordan Peterson doing it that much more egregious because Adam Lambert is doing it to be disrespectful, like purposely to be disrespectful. Yeah, you know what? Though? Can, I, can, for I, the enemy. can I push back on that a little bit? Okay, I, I, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree with you. What I'm saying is, like, I think Adam Lambert doesn't even know what that is. That's what. That's you know what I mean. Thought. Well, I was, I was going more uh, Ephesians six twelve on that. Because he's because yeah. who he's working for actively. Sure, 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 sure. Right? That's sure. more the direction I was going. No, 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 no. I'm with you on that. I'm just saying most people who are fanboying JP, right. they want to argue like, "Hey, cut him some slack," you know. Hey, you guys keep judging him like that. He's never going to come into the church. Like, I, but those are the arguments. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but, it's, if he hasn't now, you exactly. know what I mean. Like, what more? Exactly. What, what do you? What do you? What do you mean? What are we waiting? Actually, exactly. you should be you should be asking him why, and this is I think the other thing is that it's like, 
and this is something that I would ask the other JP, right? Jonathan Peugeot, like, and I understand him defending Jordan Peterson and he's done it personally with me and gotten, you know what I mean? We've had our own little thing about me, Mm -hmm. you know, calling some things out. But my question to him is, Jonathan, would you wear that jacket to the Symbolic World Conference? Of course not. And then it's like, if not, why not? And then that tells you everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, because it's not good. Because it's not it's not good. good. That's, it's, it's not that, good. But, but I just I just want to say though, because I think it's important. I was just talking to someone about this the other day. It's like I and maybe we need to digress. And I, I, I just want I want to say that we need to give a good apology for why though. Not just because yeah. Yeah. it's cringy, because it is cringy, you know, and not just because it's, you know, kind of disrespectful, but like what it does to someone. Yeah. Right. Like, like, like that's the yeah. thing I want to bring across because it's the same argument with, you know, alphabet soup. Yep. That's it. <laughs> I don't even know what year that was. I just remember seeing it being like, Lord have mercy. Um, Japanese but, made, but, by the way, Japanese yeah, made. But he, but he is an alphabet super. That's the thing. No, he is. He yeah. is. And, and again, he doesn't, he didn't know. You know what I mean? But that kind of proves the point. Like he does, you know, like you said, Ephesians 6, but mm-hmm. um, I just bring this up because to me, when I saw that, that's immediately what I went to was, was following the glitter and uh, mm-hmm. and this, you know, because it's it's for the same purpose, right? Mm-hmm. It's for yeah, entertainment. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. for entertainment, yeah. you know, and I, and I think this is really important because it's different if something happens to entertain you, but its intention is to edify you mm-hmm. versus the purpose of something is to entertain you, right? Mm-hmm. And to bring you to this place of spectacle, right? Mm-hmm. That's a very different intention. And intention is the name of the game. And the proliferation of symbol and even the confusion of symbol and just confusing the outward aesthetic of something if people think it doesn't matter, then they don't know how symbolism works, mm. right? Which is which is just so funny because we're talking about JP the and symbolic Young. symbolic world conflict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, JP and Young and, and, and all of that stuff. And it's like, wow, you know, I, I it's, it's interesting also because it really betrays the fact that there's, I know there's good intention and I'm not trying, I mean, we're just talking, right? Mm-hmm. But... I just think people don't, people aren't really taking the church seriously. Like I was saying, it just shows they think it's an ideology. They just think it's like, this is the place to be most conservative. This is the place to kind of like, you know, prove your intellectual pedigree, all the different reasons. And that's why that's, that's why it's, that's permissible for some people. Well, and and they don't don't understand. I mean, also, I want to be clear about my criticism of this situation. I'm speaking like it's in my repentance because Mm. when I was on TV, when I was serving the other side, I was actively using Christian Mm -hmm. symbols Mm -hmm. in an inverted way in Mm -hmm. service of the occult. So like Mm -hmm. I was doing that. So I know what Mm -hmm. it looks like when you're doing it on purpose. I did it. I'm in repentance for that. Yeah. That so that's the the way that I and I know what it did to me. Yeah. So like my criticism of it is coming from that place, and it's like there, yeah. and I mean, there's another thing that he knew he was going to be on stage talking to an Orthodox priest. Yeah. Now that right there, I mean, the conversation between him and Father Stephen that's a whole other thing, um, and it reminds me a lot of when he did that um, Logos conference, and he was the mm-hmm. keynote there, and he just got up mm-hmm. and did a diatribe, and it's like, what did he just say? I had no mm-hmm. idea what he just said. Um, now, let me just, I just want to say this for the record because I think it's really important because another argument can be made of there was a period in time when you could find maybe T-shirts and hoodies that would have um, a Golgotha soldier's cross essentially on it. And some would go like, well, is that the same thing? And I would say there's similarity to them, absolutely. But let me just give you an anecdotal story, right? Um I know someone who had um, a soldier's cross on a on a um, piece of clothing, and when they would wear that piece of clothing in public, they would have real problems arise. Meaning, 
you know, random people being aggressive with them manifesting, right? You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that's very different than wearing it for all the other reasons, because very simply put, and here's, here's the coup de grace. Jordan Pearson is not a Christian. Exactly. <laughs> that, exactly. That's a thing that I don't know why people just can't just like, and, like people better wake up to that. Jordan Pearson is not a Christian. He's not Orthodox. Full stop. Right. Because you, if you want to be up in arms, what I'm saying, I'm going to, I'm going to give you one saint, right? And there's really no more argument there from my perspective. Saint Simeon the New Theologian. If you read any Saint Simeon the New Theologian, if you know anything about Saint Simeon the New Theologian, and New Theologian, by the way, how many theologians are there in the church, right? You can't have that bona fide stamp by the church of Saint Simeon the New Theologian, his life, which includes his theology, his practice, all those things. And this phenomena that Jordan Peterson currently finds himself in, the two can't exist. And I understand people say, well, it takes time, it takes time. Listen, yeah. there's a difference between something taking time and someone being inoculated. Because I would say that poor man, it's like, does he need another benzo crisis to be broken? Because you can't be that close to, you know, the you can't be that close to the isotopes and not get it so a choice he's, was made like, yeah his hazmat choice. suit's too strong man you know what i mean and you know it because if you don't know it just listen to his discussion with um father steven right that's not a discussion that you it's it's disingenuous and it's wrong for someone to say well that's just like a discussion that any inquirer would have like no you can't look at jordan peterson as like the random, you know, adjunct comparative religions philosophy professor. You, you can't do that. He that's that's disingenuous to do that. You can't look at him as someone who's kind of like circling like that guy's been to Serbia, that guy's been to Russia. He's sat and spoke to bishops as a keynote speaker, had you know, clergy and bishops clap and stuff. I mean, he's been to Athos, like this isn't a, this isn't an overnight thing. Right. So we're talking a fundamental resistance that is that is really problematic. Now, who am I to say? I'm not judging. I'm just saying that the reason why I'm not judging is God willing, there will be some real humility and repentance and he'll and he'll become a Christian. Because what does it mean to be a Christian, everybody? It means that you've been baptized, chrismated, and are living a life of repentance and subjugation to the God man, Jesus Christ. Period. No more mythopoetic. No more Christ is a symbol of this and that. None of that. That's not Christianity. That's Gnosticism. Mm. Okay. Mm. That's a heresy. Uh... <laughs> Christian. That's what we're talking about. Right? God is person. Right? The God man. The Holy Trinity. Right? Until that happens, you know, until that happens, everyone needs to have a very... Um, circumspect approach because whether it's Jordan Peterson, which I love lots of stuff he says, but there's a difference between finding great things. We can plunder the, the, the riches of the Egyptians. We can do that. Right. You know, um, St. Gregory Palamas, you know, he, he was, a, he had a better grasp of platonic thought than the majority of philosophy professors in America. Right. But he, he was a Christian, right? He was, his whole life and experience is that of being united to Christ, not in a kind of allegorical way, in the sense of Christ isn't really person, it's just, you know. So very problematic, very problematic. But again, it's a rich young ruler situation, unfortunate, and even more so, like the perfect time would would have I mean God is working with it, but the perfect time obviously would have been right after the crisis that he had. Where, but now it's like he's there's so much more of the world that he would have to give up to actually really become a Christian and follow I mean, Christ. I think I think that's the fundamental problem. Is is like Father said, there's a fundamental resistance to him, and I think that like you can't get that close that many times mm -hmm. and still continue to not take the steps that's needed without like at some point he's saying no 
he's continuing to say no 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 i don't yeah. want to do this like christ opens a door and he's like no and then shuts it again and he's like i and he just keeps doing it over and over and over again and i don't know many <clears throat> at least i live in a bubble but i don't know many orthodox christians that kind of came young men that came to orthodoxy by the way of jordan peterson that still really believe in jordan peterson they they still don't really none back. of them do yeah i think a lot of them were like okay yeah he's the on ramp but you don't hang out yeah. on ramp but see i you see here's the, the thing i i andrew i even think that's wrong and i've been pushing back against that idea with people like where because many people have told me oh yeah i'm orthodox because of jordan peterson like he was a he was a stepping stone for me and I, i've been saying no actually i think you're you're orthodox in spite of jordan peterson like you were looking for christ you were mm -hmm. on the way heading looking for mm -hmm. christ and jordan peterson was in the way and waylaid you because he mm -hmm. had like something that like you're on the road to christ and then here's this guy who's like oh are you going to are you looking for something because I got something for you right over here. Mm -hmm. And it's like every single because and we know that he was not the stepping stone because, as you say, every single person who comes to orthodoxy then has to let him go. Mm -hmm. Like he was a detour. Yeah. He but was I mean, a detour. I mean, on a previous episode, I think we talked about the, like and I don't know some of the guys that, you know, but like Crowley was a way yep. to get you to Christ. And like, well, you know, again, he was a detour. Well, like he was someone standing I, I, what was I looking for? I was looking for like answers. I was looking for truth. Yeah. I was, I was looking for, and, and then here are all of the occult is in the way because it has, because it knows how to use some of the tools and some of the symbols. And so it like reflects reality much better than like the atheistic, whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure I have an argument and I'm actually going to see that you're probably right on this. I know I just had a conversation with it, actually a listener this mm. last Sunday where his story is the story of most Christians. He's an older gentleman. My older, I mean, he's older than me. And he came and he came to St. Mary's for the first time. He basically was like, well, I grew up Protestant. So boy, that didn't make sense. Got into like kind of like new agey, culty stuff, kind of got into some Catholicism for a while, went to a mega church for a while. And then through all of that stuff, he ended up in orthodoxy and said, like, okay, well, I think that that's actually a pretty typical story. So something about that formula for certain people works. And it's just like, okay, so then at what point um, is this not so much an equation, but to use the language, to use a language, were these variables not leading to the sum? We're not leading to the product of that equation. Like X1 is your occultism, X2, or, or X then Y is your Protestantism, then your Z is your blah, 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 ending with your product being. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the church talks about this still in regards of like the righteous philosophers, though, you know? And so there is this space where. You know, like you guys are familiar with, you know, there's, I forget which monastery it is on Athos, but they have, you know, like Plato and Aristotle and the Narthex, you know, and, um, and there's something to be said for these forerunners, if you will. But the problem is, is once Christ comes, they do have to follow away. There's a reason they're in the Narthex. And, and I think the problem becomes, and I, I've had this experience with the spiritual son once where it's like, you know, just kind of working with him. And eventually he was like, he got to the point where even though he was kind of really holding on to the philosophers and trying to make that a thing, you know, and eventually he just kind of like had to let it go. Yeah. Right. And I, and I think that's the key thing is you, and it, however you want to cut it, right. Ultimately you got to let it go and you will eventually see that it eventually became a, a, a hindrance. Right. So the way that I reconcile what both of you are saying is, it is a stepping stone, but the vast majority of people hold on to it far too long, and then it becomes an obstacle because that that gap of it being a stepping stone is is so short that you almost don't, you you almost it almost doesn't even register, right? It, if you stay there too long with those um, stepping stones, it does become an obstacle, like like uh, Cyprian saying, because then. Christ, well, the Holy Spirit, your spiritual father, your godfather, and other people are going to have to really 
pull out a bunch of tangles because of that, right? Like, I'm just speaking from experience. Like, I've had people, I'm thinking, I have one gentleman in mind who, you know, I don't know if he's even in the church anymore. And a lot of that, you know, he had way more reverence and was way more apt to quote um, Jordan Peterson than he was Christ in the Gospels, literally, yeah. than the fathers. You know what I mean? That that's a, that's a real thing, and so that's a case example where it does become an obstacle because it is easier to, and that that's the thing. It is easier to imbibe what Jordan Peterson's saying because it relates to uh, things of the world. Like Jordan Peterson, what he shares with you has nothing to do with the spiritual life. It has everything to do with the world, mm. with mental health, you know, with the world of, of the psyche. But it doesn't have anything to do with the spiritual life in, re in regards of, you know, finding Christ. Because that's the other thing is people get, mis they, I don't know, people, not just because of Jordan Peterson, but because of, you know, all the proliferation of fantasy and all these things. I mean, you know, some people can very easily get more influenced by, you know, the worldview of doom than they can, like the spiritual life, you know what I mean? Sure. So it's like, that's, that's an unfortunate reality when you live in a world where symbol is devoid of truth and imbued with seduction. Mm. That's, that's, that's what we deal with. You know, the, the ironic thing that I'm thinking now, as you're saying this father about, Jordan Peterson refusing it being called having all the opportunity and refusing mm. to be orthodox and refusing to approach Christ the person is that there is no doubt and to me it is self-evident that were he to do that number one he, he would get order to his entire philosophy we would mm -hmm. no longer get him speaking in mm -hmm. ways that are incoherent and make no sense. Mm -hmm. Like everything right. would make sense. And That's also right. his ability to articulate orthodoxy would, because of who he is and the skill set that he's bringing with him, would be of like the magnitude in <laughs> incalculable. Incalculable. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the crazy and ironic part is that it's like yeah. Jordan everything would make sense for you so you would get what you want and then you would be able to serve christ with this fantastic set of tools that but would you know, magnify but the thing is i i think and this is this is at this point we're just for god forgive us because we're just using a man yeah, that's true a yes study. it's true god it's forgive true. us you know it's true but i think i just want to say this point because i think it just plays out for the human dilemma which is but then what does what do you do? Because you and I, right. you know, we all know, like that's why if anyone wants to be a philosopher, you're a sucker, right? Because your whole the whole way that you make your bones is by killing your dad. If there's no dad to kill, then there's then you don't there's no reason for you to exist. That's true. You know what I mean? And so yeah, like like that whole reality of him being able, like he needs to get up on the stage and try right. to question what Father Stephen is saying. And mm -hmm. to Father Stephen's credit, you know, it was just kind of like he was being very patient because <laughs> Father Stephen, he's got quite the tongue on him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he was holding back, you know, mm -hmm. God bless him for doing that, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, I'm surprised he didn't just say, like, what did you just say? Like, what are you talking about? You know? Mm -hmm. But but the distinction between those two, Father Stephen's very, giving very clear, mm -hmm. grounded, explanations and answers mm -hmm. and you know dr peterson's just like what <laughs> you know and so he could no longer do that and that's part of his i his for as part of his identity is mm -hmm. is kind of getting in and like well what about this and what about that you know it isn't it's no fun and there's no there's what's going to be entertaining if he has nothing to kind of come up against and, and, and have this like struggle with, you, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Mm -hmm. that, that would, that would undermine his brand in his mind. I'm saying in his mind, we mm -hmm. see that like, no, I mean, I think that it would be a huge explosion before he got canceled. 
I think yeah, that right. yeah. I, 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 you know, I think that I think that the absolute miraculous cohesion mm -hmm. that people would see a thought would be all short of divine, mm -hmm. and people it, it would it would point to Christ in such a profound, powerful way, mm -hmm. and so he would need to worry about his brand or mm -hmm. you know, I mean, but it's like you you spend your whole it's like. Now, in some regard, it's like the vet who's like spent his whole life on tour. He comes home, it's like I gotta fight something. Yeah, you know, I gotta fight something. Yeah. And it's like, how do you just relax and 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 sit sit with your family or sit at the or in his case, he's been the one with people sitting at his feet for so long. Yes. How how is he now going to sit at the feet of the master? He can't. I think that's yes. the problem. I don't know. I was never really into him, but the vibe I've very much gotten from him is being a catechumen is pretty, you know, it's humbling. It's like, mm -hmm. it's really, really, it's humbling to be, you know, and like um, for the churches who still uh, dismiss catechumens uh, at the point where they're supposed to be dismissed in the liturgy, mm -hmm. you have to leave, you know, there's mm -hmm. prayers, you know, beforehand for you to come up and like, so you can even hide. And it's very clear, like you are not here yet like you are not here yet you are mm -hmm. still very much and like i don't know how things are in canada i imagine they're probably relatively the same here's in america but that instant gratification like that doesn't exist in the orthodox church in that sense of like well no you get to just come in and be a part of this and it's like no you have to learn you have to unlearn a bunch of the stuff you've already like one of my stepping stones would probably be the author um david foster wallace Mm -hmm. And so much of my stuff of like my catechism was like, this stuff is not making sense anymore. Like, because there's no Christ, like, because mm -hmm. he's talking about these are the ways to get through a busy grocery store line at the end of the work day. And you just want to get home and everyone's making you mad. This is a way to do that in a way where you're not just constantly mad. It's like, yeah, but to what end? Like, there is no end here. There's nothing yeah. for you at the end of the road, except another one of these situations it's like, yeah, he talks about, he kind of hints at like, yeah, you need a God, you need to worship and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but where's that interpersonal relationship? Where's that relationship where you can come before Christ and be like, you know, this is really hard for me. Please help me to just second by second kind of make it through this. And that there's none of that there. And coming well, in. Well, hold on. Hold on. There is. There is. And I think I just want to make this distinction. I'm not trying to be that guy. You can do that. And people do do it with their, with other gods. The difference yeah. is <laughs> yeah. Christ Christ is the only God that that will answer and, and, and change you. Yeah. I just want to throw that in there. Like well, it's, for it's the better. Important. The only one that will change for you the for better. the better. For the better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other ones lead they'll change you all right. Yeah. yeah. Or you'll yeah. you'll change yourself in service to them. Let's put it more mm -hmm. like that. And yeah, and I I, I figure where I was going with that, but that's that's pretty good. No, I mean it wasn't probably gonna end up anywhere super beneficial well, da david but... foster wallace is kind of a proto jordan peterson really mm. he's he's pretty i think he he called to men in in the mm -hmm. 90s with infinite mm -hmm. jest mm -hmm. but i think he called i think it was a broader call um you know and again i'm not i'm not like a um a expert on this guy i've read most of his work mm -hmm. and i can say that like um really i think he I think he called more towards apathy than he did mm -hmm. towards the spirit of responsibility. I think he was like, no, because one of the greatest things that David Foster Wallace did not like was irony. He did not mm -hmm. like where television was going. He did not like the, uh, you know, like these people are awful, but it's funny to watch them be awful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, you know, like, oh, there is no truth, you know, like, it's all just, like, kind of silly, whatever, whatever. It's been a while since I've thought about this. But um, he really called more towards, like, the 90s, um, I don't know, coolness. It's, like, it's at a certain point, like, it's not, it's not beneficial to be too cool for school anymore. Like, at a certain point, like, life, you got to get back in there. It's not okay to just sit back and just make fun of everyone and sit back and poke fun at society you actually have to get back in there and do something about it like 
you know, and he tended to be pretty liberal too. Um, he tended to be like uh, one of the examples he uses is something that would make you mad is watching someone in a giant gas guzzling SUV that's going to destroy the planet, you know? So mm -hmm. like he, he might've been a, a proto in some sense, but like, I think he called, he was more of like one of those um, calling from the wilderness a little bit, like of just like, he just saw something terribly, terribly wrong and he wasn't really end up, able to fix it in himself at all um because you know as he took his own life and um well yeah that i you shall know the mother fruits yeah i know mm -hmm. and that, and that's ultimately that's the where i ended up with him was but bro couldn't make it work like but and, but peterson almost took his own life too well i mean i mean i i mean from how they tell it he was pretty darn close i mean it was maybe a little slower of a process I don't know. But, I mean, but when you get to the point where you're like need to be put into a coma to detox from something I mean, yeah, you, I, that you put into I, your I, own body. I just forgive me. I want to say this because I just, you know, I got to put the priest hat on and I, go I got to say, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know we're going too far. I, I just, well, actually, I, I want to give a warning because I, I think this is one of the things that um, I know there's going to be some people like, man, you guys just went on for four hours talking about, you know, trash and Jordan Peterson and all this stuff. And like, God bless him. You know, um, I have and I will continue to offer prayers. I pray that he bows his knee to Christ. But I just want to say why this is an important conversation is because <laughs> There's something that a lot of people, there's one thing that people never learn. Well, excuse me. There's something that I, I, I have seen where it's been very difficult for them to learn when they're being weaned off the teat of, of, of Peterson. Um, and that is you don't learn that the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things revealed belong to us and our children from ever. Right. Um, that's from Deuteronomy. And when you just by example train people to push the boundaries, you know, um, it, this goes the same for the psychonauts, right? When you train or you example, you model people to push the boundaries, the limits of consciousness without the proper respect, mm -hmm. you're really setting people up for damnation. Mm -hmm. I don't like. No one ever, I've never heard anyone say that before. I'm not saying like, ooh, I'm, I'm pointing something. I'm just speaking as a Christian, as a priest, as someone who cares about the souls of people. No one talks about that. You, you, you give people a false sense that everything is open and go for it. And the fact of the matter is there's more people who are weak and incapable of navigating the dark waters of consciousness then like then they realize right it, it, are you following what i'm saying i just think oh, yeah. this is real important to say because oh, no yeah. one talks about no one talks about that. like no one talks about that and there's a reason why it isn't just kind of oh i give up i'm tired there's a reason why nietzsche mm -hmm. took you know died right mm -hmm. there's there's a reason why um mr peterson came to that place of despair mm -hmm. i mean this whole world, right, is not even inching. It's like starting to run towards that that place of despair. And it's a very real thing that can that people can succumb to in ways that they don't realize it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to read something and just be like, oh, now everything's meaningless. I'm just gonna leap from a train. Like, no, 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 no that begins to seep into your consciousness. And as that seeps in there, you begin to become open now to the enemy, to the demons, and they will push you to that edge. And there's been, there's countless souls, I think that have found themselves in despair and have lost their lives. Maybe not from a direct gunshot, maybe not from something that a forensic officer would say is suicide, but on a spiritual level, it is suicide. Yeah. Right. And I think I think that is why it's a serious thing, because when you dance around the truth, 
and you teach others to dance around the truth for the sake of vanity, what is the fruit of that? Right? It's so, so I, I think this is, I just felt it was a couple of, I just felt as a couple of upon me to say that. Yeah. Because it, this isn't just about, you know, oh, you guys are haters or like whatever. I'm not a hater. Like, you know, I, I'm, I have no, like I said, no problem plundering the Egyptians for their spoils and using something for the sake of, you know, the good. But, you know, it's few and far between a person who has the humility to say, like, I don't know if I can use this tool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone, everyone thinks they could pick up a claymore and swing it, but. No, there's a reason. Well, the, danger, the, the, the danger of the danger of viewing the light at a distance and not moving toward the light of God like fully is that when you're viewing the light from the distance, you're in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things in that darkness that you probably mm -hmm. don't want to be standing next to. Let's just put mm -hmm. it that way. And I'm speaking mm -hmm. from experience mm -hmm. like the light of God is there. So it's like to approach it and to try to continue to approach it and to step out of the darkness because what's next to you in the darkness is no good like mm -hmm. looking and talking about the light and standing mm -hmm. there and to talking about it at a distance is mm -hmm. it's putting you you're putting yourself in peril mm -hmm. in great peril mm -hmm. because the things that are right there looking at it from a distance with you are not good things at all and they're there and I think that that's yeah, my, that's that's my because like you say, with the psychonaut thing, which I was there with the Peterson thing, which I was there. It's an on it really is an like it's a portal to opening up like just you're in a space where you're making yourself known and you're opening things up and things are going to start coming through and trying to mess with you. I mean, that's that would that's the whole argument I have against the psychedelics that, and i know the mm -hmm. psychonaut thing is just like like i mean like you can do what you want i'm I'm not gonna stop you but like it's um it's dangerous i've i've encountered i've had encounters with things that later on i was like it's starting to feel a little demony like that was a <laughs> little demony that didn't seem like it was necessarily like mm -hmm. a good force and i mean it was an on-ramp whatever or a stepping stone or whatever mm -hmm. half a staircase of like the first time it helped me to like be like, oh well, you know, actually, I think I could probably shed some of this stuff to be able to make it to orthodoxy. Like, I think mm -hmm. I could probably make it there. Um, but I mean, so much of that stuff, like I said, with the David Foster Wallace, was like so much of that stuff was just getting me in the door. Within a couple of months, being like, okay, so a lot of that stuff wasn't true. Like, uh, like the 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 self motivation, the preservation of the human spirit, like. This ability to like through the internet, we can now solve almost like any problem. I remember this is yeah. what we planned on because we're almost at two hours. I remember having this thing where I was like, with the wonderful advent of the internet, I can now solve any problem I, that mm -hmm. comes up in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And at the time, this was like 2000. Tower of Babel. Well, yeah. with, but <laughs> like, but even in like a comedic sense, like, what if the Tower of Babel? Because like I had, um, did you just bleep yourself? No, my mic's messing up. I meant to what say. What if something. the tower? What if the tower of Babel did what? Now didn't, I think you got bleeped on purpose. Oh, <laughs> I mean, didn't work. What if it didn't work? Ah, yeah. Like, what yeah. if it was kind of an inept? Like, you went up to like go use it or whatever, and like like confetti shot out, and it was just like, oh yeah, you know, this is it. But yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, this is like 2011 or 2012, whatever, one of those years, and I still had a Zoom. And mm -hmm. there was uh, an MP3 player, and I remember there was player, something yeah. wrong with it, and I kept trying to figure out what and I was going like on the internet, like through message boards, mm -hmm. and like nothing was making a difference. I was like, and I remember just like at a certain point through all my like frantic searching, I was just like, if it can't even help me fix a Zoom, like how is it gonna like help solve like <laughs> greater problems than this? And there are far greater problems than me just trying to have a Zoom, and. Mm -hmm. That was like one of the first times of being like, oh, like. I can't wait to check GPT comes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I feel like that's a, I feel like that's a, a, a like a precursor. You had a precursor moment to well, our current moment, right? Oh, 100 percent. And I got into all the um, crazy stuff. And, and then like, of course, as I'm one to do, 
I threw the baby out with the bathwater when mm-hmm. like I started sure. to like, you know, get off of psychedelics or whatever. And I threw out a bunch of good stuff too. But like, <clears throat> I know that at the end of the day, like I, you know, I, like is it, as cringy as it is or whatever, but it's like, you know, um, I mean, I don't know. The saints just never needed to use that stuff. That stuff was just like, it's just repentance. It's just the cross. It's just kneeling at the foot of the cross and just being like, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. And that was like one of my big things from psychedelia was like, I can figure it out. I can figure I like with the power of yeah, this. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Now I'm on ADHD medicine for the first time and I'm doing well in college. I'm and like, by the way, not nailing life leaving a right. large wake of destruction behind me at all times. I wasn't even but thinking cool, you were, but, but thinking, thinking you were. I was yeah. mm-hmm. and constantly Deception. having people Deception. telling me, Hey bro, you kind of get psycho when you're on Adderall. I'm like, you just don't get it. You're not at my level, man. You're just not at my level. You're just not thinking the way that I'm thinking. And it's like, and then looking back, it's like, Oh my gosh, no. Like who does that? Who acts that way? It's people on meth. That's how you act is when you are doing it. Like, who like gets a towel from whatever and then uses like dips it in lake and like puddle water and cleans the inside of a bus stop. Like, unless you're on meth, like, like I'm talking about a very real world example. It's like, no, that is living a life where you think <laughs> every single thing you're doing is correct. And it's just like, no, there is no check on anything. All of your behavior is 100% correct. And that's the feeling that I had on stimulants that couple with psychedelia is like i was a train wreck it like, sounds pretty demonic to me 100 percent, and that's that's yeah. how i came into like like a train wreck i blundered my way into the orthodox church and so much stuff I had to get rid of and it was just because i opened portals i opened portals i opened my consciousness to things that was like you didn't really need that stuff well the, well yeah i mean the thing is i know i know you didn't mean it that way but i just want to give a correction because it just kind of ties up what we're trying to say is like but that's the thing is you didn't blunder your way into the Orthodox Church. Christ found you yeah. naked in your own blood and, and pulled picked you up and cleaned you up. And like, sure. yeah. like like that's the thing is again, that's part of the problem that a good majority I won't say a majority, a lot of people who come in through JP and other sources, they think they've found their way into the church. You know what I mean? Sure. And the thing is, is like, no, Christ brings you. And that's not semantics. That's like, until you recognize that, you're not on the right path. And so I, I think that's the thing, you know, no, I mean, it's important, you know, so. It's like the, you know, when there's like the two, the the beach, and then there's your footprints, and there's like a second set of footprints. And then it was like, <laughs> mine was like, it was like claw marks on the sand. It was like, because Christ was <laughs> just like dragging dragged. me. And I was just like, I don't, I don't, I'm comfortable where I am for the first time. I'm comfortable. And he was like, well sucks to be you because you have to go in and do this whole other thing now so but anyway um Cyprian, did you have anything that it seemed like you had something you want to say you're good i uh i i mean it just it, it just brought me to uh father saying that brought me to to think about my own experience and how like what a mercy and what blessing what a blessing and and the Lord's understanding and working with my horribly prideful nature that he gave me a situation where I, there's absolutely no way that I could even in my wildest dreams, imagine that I had found my way to the church. (laughs) Like the situation that he gave for me, there was like, no, 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 no. That's You're going to be, you're going to be in the middle of the ocean where there's no orthodoxy. And so I'm going to bring it to you. Uh, You're not, I'm not going to allow you, so what that's a that's a great mercy, uh, incredible yeah. mercy uh f- for that because otherwise I think I'd be sunk. Yeah. You know. Thank God. Literally. Cause... Thank God. Thank God. Anyway. Um okay. So um oh, it's been a while. Um yeah, I was going to end it there. I don't remember exactly what we do here. Um the, you have you say thank thank you for checking out the show. Thank you for you checking talk, out the show. You talk about our store. Uh, we have a merch store. That's royalpath.store. Okay. Uh, we don't see any of that money. Uh, and we don't have any um, no Schema Monk merch yet. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and um, 
then oh yeah we anytime we mention music we try and throw it on a playlist it's both on apple music and spotify i think it's royal path playlist podcast something like that um and then thank you uh jack for the gifs uh that is uh still i mean i know it's been a little while but you've been still absolutely deserve a shout out uh fourth member of the show without a doubt um if you want to reach out and make general contact uh royalpath.contact uh no, contact network. at royalpath.network contact at royalpath.network that uh we have an assistant who answers that um she's great again be merciful she has her own life um so uh and she's doing this completely for free um and so if she has time you know when when she has time she'll get back to you but you know don't expect anything quickly then there's always andrew at royalpath.network as well there's still a fair amount of people who reach out to me that way um and then uh there's the coffee um what uh yeah, scola scola, scola. Coffee. Scola link in the description. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a coffee made uh, by a parishioner. Uh, it's really great. Um, and then, uh, you know, he's got his own, you know, he's teaching, I believe he's teaching at Mount Tabor how to like, mm -hmm. uh, how to roast mm -hmm. coffee, you know, and that's great. Like, who doesn't want to know how to do that? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, any support, that would be great. And then, uh, you know, just continue to pray for father as he recovers. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's still, we're still not there yet. Um, you know, there's still going to take a little bit of time. And so any prayer is helpful. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. I, I mean, I don't have any words for all the prayers and the support and generosity that everyone showed my family and I, um, during this time. And, you know, it's been, I've never been through anything like this before to the, to the glory of God. So, um, I appreciate just all the prayers and the love. I mean, um, it's very humbling. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everybody and thank God. Um, thank God for the church. Thank God for love, you know, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very humble. So thank you uh, for all the love that was shown. Let's end it there. Uh, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.